Hey guys, welcome back to Artosis Casts. This is the thrilling conclusion to the three game series here between Rain and Calm. We're on retro for map number three. Uh, you know, it has been a 2 0 for Rain so far, but definitely looked like there were possibilities for Calm to win uh, in both the previous games, but Rain just showing some of his ridiculous stability in this matchup. Uh, you know, Retro is going to play a lot differently than Dark Origin. It is a four player map. In this case, they are cross spawns. So, you know, that's going to make uh, the travel distance a lot longer. It's going to make scouting take a lot longer and things like that. So, yeah, we'll see if it's going to be a little bit longer than some of these previous ones. Uh, that last one in particular ending pretty quickly. So far, the story has mostly been about Rain's Dark Templars. Uh, it really feels like they won him a couple games in a row. Obviously, there was a lot of other moves going on as well, but uh, very, very well done in that regard. Thank you guys very much, of course, for checking this out. Appreciate it. Uh, lots of lots of great games incoming as well. I've gotten some recommendations lately. Uh, I do want to open up some way for you guys to maybe recommend players or... Well, I can't really recommend scenarios because I don't watch the games beforehand. I do sometimes get recommended games that have really good stuff in them. And I do appreciate if someone recommends a game that has like some sort of interesting thing in it uh, that they don't tell me what that is. Because <laughs> I don't want to be spoilered. I like to just kind of see things fresh for the first time. But yeah, uh, and I think I'll work towards that, getting some sort of uh, recommendation system down for people. If uh, it's like, oh man, I did see... Some people are asking for certain pro gamers that they really like to follow and stuff like that. And I could definitely jump around and and grab some recent games from from almost anybody, realistically. Anyways, uh, yeah, thank you again for watching, guys. Now, looking at this, it is a double probe scout. And this is something you do when you forge fast expansion on a four-player map. You want to be able to scout your opponent pretty quickly. The probe going to get up and see, okay, well, that is a pool first build, obviously, uh, based on the hatchery health based on the time he got there uh but he will go ahead throw down that nexus and because it is such a far travel distance he'll just throw down cannons now at this point should be one cannon i think into a gateway be pretty surprised if it's anything else uh but yeah the probe right now just kind of running away from these zerglings gonna go ahead take a little u-turn there and check out if another hatchery is being made or maybe just dart back in the main base see if the gas is being taken that type of thing so, yeah, up comes the probe, sees the gas timing, hasn't seen the third hatch yet, but I'm sure he has a good idea of what's happening there. If you look at the mini-map, you can kind of see, if we zoom way out, Zerglings and Overlords being sent kind of everywhere right now. A lot of intel being gathered as he checks the location and just kind of checking around the map in general to see if there's anything out there. You never know, like, right, if this was an early gateway or something, there could already be, uh, you know, Zealots on the way, so... Just checking that out, but seeing the forge, he's going to know exactly what's going on. That this was, in fact, a forge fast expansion. And that means that the game should look pretty slow and ordinary for these first few minutes, right? This should be heavy droning, nonstop pro production across the map on the other side. And, you know, just some... Basically, there will be a little bit of scouting from Rain's side, but not much else going on, right? And the scouting is probably just going to be the one probe trying to stay alive. And then he'll make some zealots and maybe send those zealots out across the map based on what he's seen and what he hasn't seen as of yet. Now, the probe does go past uh, the layer in the natural base. So, sees that, in fact, this is going to be a relatively fast layer, which generally points towards that spire. But, of course, you never know 100% for sure unless you scout it. And even if they're going spire, you don't know if that's going to be mutalisks or not. Now, Stargate on the way. That is one thing we've noticed with Rain is his Corsair usage has been pretty darn fantastic. Always finding ways to get in and get Overlord kills, as well as loads of scouting, which is probably the primary focus of the Corsair anyways. Now, the first Zalot coming out for a little bit of a scout. We were talking about this just a moment ago. Unfortunately, he runs into the four Zerglings and kind of glitches as he tried to pull it back. So he's already taken massive, massive, massive damage. Like he took 120 out of his 160 health immediately. So this is going to fall pretty quickly. Probably won't get a single kill. And unfortunate. Unfortunate. That's not what you want out of the first cell, but it's not the end of the world. It's not like he just loses the game because of that or anything. 
Zalt continuing to uh, just hightail it out of here. He wants to see if he can catch a glimpse of anything else coming out. That's why he's walking kind of generally in this direction. He knows he can't make it to the natural. Like Khan would have to accidentally misclick his lings away and not notice it. But occasionally you see something like they thought they were going to kill the Zalt a little bit quicker and more units are rallying out. That type of that type of situation. Now, here comes the Spire here for Calm. Looking over at Rain's base, you can see it's a very quick Templar Archives. He's got his second assimilator up and running. He's had it for about a minute and a half. Uh, and that means that, you know, he can go for a quick Dark Templar with this, or he could rush Psy Storm. We'll see about that in just a moment. This first Corsair going across the map, going to get a little bit of additional scouting done as well. I'm actually really excited to see what uh, what happens with, as far as that tech. Does he just start Psy Storm right away? Does he start High Templars? Or I think he's going to get a DT out. It doesn't make sense to me not to get at least one DT in this situation. Yeah, and there it is. So this is a Dark Templar rush. Uh, now, it's... You know, I guess it is kind of similar to... Uh, well, no, not really. Okay, so a Dark Templar rush against both Terran and Protoss is a risky build that is looking for a free victory immediately. There are, of course, fringe situations where the Dark Templar might get in and deal like a little bit of damage but not kill your opponent. But generally, if it gets in uh, against Terran or Protoss, that means there's no detection and you win the game, right? That is not the case against Zerg since Overlords detect, right? So... But it, sometimes you can, oh my God, this micro. Okay, I'm gonna, I, that was insane. He was doing moving shots and loops to stop the Scourge from hitting him. He came so close to getting this Overlord. Doesn't get it, but ludicrously good micro. Like, I, the thing is, I don't normally commentate on things like that when someone's doing something a little fancy because I don't think it's gonna really change anything and they're probably gonna stop. But he went for it hard. He was only one hit away. Anyways, this DT walks in. And like I was saying, like, you're not going to get the free win off of the first DT like you can in the other two matchups. But if you can walk across the map and get five drone kills like that, that's amazing. That was an incredibly strong DT. And Rain 100% is happy with that. Your very first DT killing that many drones right off the bat, it really uh, slows down that Zerg economy quite a bit. Now, let's take a look back at Rain Space couple more gateways coming up he is making corsairs pretty non-stop trapping his probe right here in between the two pylons so that he can go ahead and group that with the corsairs make them stack that plus one corsair attack almost done size storm gets started plus one is almost done here as well uh speed is done for the zealots but see no plus one so they aren't just wrecking the lings quite yet but they are moving across the map uh, Corsair is coming as well. So this is a pretty common play where what we're going to see is these Zealots run up to attack the Hydras and then the Corsairs will jump on the Overlords. And you have to retarget, but if you do uh, retarget onto the Corsairs, then the Zealots kill everything very quickly. And you can see, look at that. Yeah, the, the Hydras are having a hard time with the Zealots and the Corsairs are getting Overlords. So a very good double-pronged attack right here. And look at that, he's already killed like three and he's going for like a fourth right now. The Zealots still tanking. Don't forget they do have higher attack priority. So uh, down those go, these are all basically still green Corsairs at this point. 51 of 37 supply, 11 overlords on the way. Oh my God. This reminds me of a StarCraft II pro known as a laser. <laughs> if anything supply blocks him, he'll make like 10 overlords immediately. And so we're seeing that here from Calm. He's making a gigantic amount of overlords. Not going to be supply block for an extremely long time. I'm honestly very surprised he made that many. Look at this, 59 of 126. What? 59 of 126. An additional macro hatchery coming up. We have another hatchery down there at 6 o'clock for a fourth base. Corsairs still patrolling about. Dude, he... Yeah, okay, so he has four hydras here. Man, that looks juicy. Oh, that's a lot of scourge, though. Hold on. Is Rain going to be able to save these Corsairs? The Scourge are right on his back. He's trying to do some fancy turns. This is so hard. The Scourge, oh, getting a connection right there. The thing is, when he turns, you're going to make up ground. You can see the Scourge kind of going to the side. It's for a flank, right? It's, it's 
So there's Scourge right behind, and then they try to turn around. Now, that is some really nice micro as well. Splitting off some, trying to figure out which Scourge are attacking which Corsairs, and then using the other Corsairs to attack those Scourge. So that was the idea. It didn't work out, but it was a good try from Rain. He loses all but three. This could help uh, Calm go into Mutalisks a little bit later, because I don't think there's going to be many more Corsairs made, if any at all. Let's take a look at the tech we have going on. So over on this side, it's Lurker upgrade on the way for Calm. Still just kind of defending everything, making a few Scourge there as well. He's getting his four bases uh, going right now, saturating. Here for Rain, he's going into those heavier Dragoons that I've talked about so many times that I really appreciate from his style. I think Rain has a better mid and late game uh, than most Protosses in this matchup. He does not overdo it on those early Zealots. Of course, he has to use some. It's not that they're bad or anything, but he gets in those Dragoons relatively quickly and has those better mid-game fights. He's taking his third base with really reasonable speed here as well, throwing down a couple cannons. He's got enough army here. This does not look like a place you really want to attack as Zerg. Looking up here, yeah, not here either. Two, uh, two size Stormers, High Templars behind these cannons. Dragoons being rallied out in front. So everything looking pretty good. In fact, look at that. He did this on six gate. This is kind of an older thing as well. You know, it, we went through a period where it's like you could tell by the number of gates how quickly the Protoss would want to take the third. And then for a long time, it was just like every game was eight gates. Like every pro game was just Protoss going eight gateways, whether they were taking a quick third or not. Just get that full production up. And honestly, I don't know which is necessarily better. I think it's it just has to do so much with what's happening in the game. Does Zerg have any potential to get you? Well, you might need those extra gates, right? Those extra units could make or break uh, the tide of battle. Now, the Dragoons and High Templars all walking up towards this 12 o'clock base. I wonder if he's going to try to set that up quickly because I'm looking down here and it's just a few cannons and a couple zealots. Like if you attacked your whole army here, you would break it pretty quick. So he's got to be careful. He's got to do some zoning with this army, right? This is one of the powerful things that you can do with the Protoss army. It can be hard to attack into Zerg, but if you can get in front of your bases, you can kind of walk back and forth, like shark around and look for units to pick off and just try to take value from the Zerg player, right? So let's see what he's going to do. So, because see this setup here, we have a ton of lurkers set up. We have a bunch of sunkins and we have the Hydra rally. This spot is one of the hardest spots on modern maps for Protoss to break through against Zerg. I have seen countless armies die there. So he does not want to attack in there. Now, going towards this six o'clock base, six o'clock is not well defended. It's two lurkers and three sunkens total. So he's going to start breaking up. The flank comes down and storms go down upon it. And I think rain is just going to instantly kill this. You've got to bring more than that little group of Hydras. It looks like he does, though. A lot of Lurkers running up, trying to get a good burrow. That is an excellent size storm that goes down. I don't see any... Okay, there is the Observer. It is going to back up a little bit. Lots of Lings getting in here. We don't have the Adrenal gr uh, Glands upgrade as of yet. Uh, so they aren't doing that much damage. But he continues to push up with as many units as he possibly can. Great storm right there. Doesn't kill his Observer. Sunken's finishing. More units coming up from Calm. And it looks like Rain not going to be able to get the kill that he was looking for here. Then get one more storm off, maybe. No, he gets the energy, but does not get to cast it. So he ends up losing his army. Was it worth it? Well, he is up in supply, and he is setting up a fourth base during this. Now, the problem is the actual quality of his standing army is very weak. It's now mostly zealots. Okay, we have a few dragoons. We have a couple high templars here. But overall, it's not really that high quality. Whereas we look down here at Calm, look at this. Double evolution chamber there. Defiler mound on the way. Getting a Nidus up. He's getting the Adrenal upgrade. He's going into melee attack, right? He's getting all these important, very strong late game things. Whereas this army is still a mid game army or an early mid game army even, based on what he's lost so far. So it feels to me right now like yeah, okay, Rain is up in supply. Yeah, he has the four bases, but he can't really attack. Like, he runs up there. He knew he wasn't going to attack there. You Like, this army just isn't going to break very much. Any entrenched position going to be incredibly hard to deal with. Now, this, when you see a setup that looks like this, it means that Zerg is getting ready to take this base. Lurkers, Lings, and Hydras on top of a ramp. Very hard for Protoss to get through. 
I don't see a drone right now. It seems as if he may have sent it. This has a kill. Maybe this caught a drone that was sent here, but he's definitely going to want to get a drone up here and take that as his fifth. If he can get that base and hold it, it's going to be very hard for Rain. Now, Rain comes up and he does start to push into here, but as I mentioned previously, this spot is in... in there's four of these spots, right? Here, 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 and here. It's... It's such a great focal point for defense for Zerg because you have to go through this tiny choke. And it's not super tiny, but like this choke, it's a choke, right? It's not wide open. If you're fighting on open ground, Protoss can do a lot better. But yeah, going into there against the lurkers and everything can be very, very tough. Oh my God, there goes the drone. If you get the drone, it's actually a huge moment. Ah, I don't think he's going to get it. Uh, taking the fight down here, he does have to focus on killing off these hydras as well. Doesn't want to lose anything of value. He did end up getting the drone, so the drone doesn't get up here. That's important. Just slowing the drone here is big. And look at this. Lots of lurkers being sent to the bottom right. It looks like calm. Just going to expand down here. Now, yeah, yeah, this, this is getting a little bit tricky because if Calm gets both the other main bases, that's not a game you're ever going to win, right? It's very, it, basically, it, it's, it's kind of similar to like Terran versus Protoss or something, right? If your other, if your opponent gets three mains, game's done. The game's done. Like you're not, you're not going to be able to come back from something like that. The cost efficiency you would need is just too high to to be able to be done against any player of reasonable skill compared to you see he's got his four bases rain has had a ridiculously awesome economy this whole time he does need more bases he is going to throw a nexus down here this is actually turning into an insane macro game right now so he's going up to a fifth base at the same time a fifth base is being made here obviously this is a little bit quicker he's getting the nidus uh, but honestly, like Zerg can play four or five base hive and get pretty darn cost efficient with the plague spell. So I think that is something that we'll end up seeing quite a bit. You see the defilers out, you know, obviously uh, Zerglings with the adrenal upgrade along with lurkers and defilers are an absolutely ridiculously hard to deal with end game. On the Protoss side, you're going to have to think about Reavers, right? See, plague comes down. You can't heal out of any of this plague damage. That's a, that's a big problem, right? A lot of these units now are just going to go down to one to three health. And plasma shields fall very, very quickly. Now, looking at Rain's base, he is getting into Reaver tech, okay? He is getting into Reavers. More High Templars, Archons, okay, very good. He does have a secondary forge, and he's starting plasma shields, which I do like to see quite a bit. Uh, I really like the idea of two forges getting to 2-2, two, two, and then you get, like, plasma in plus three, and then you get plasma in plus three. So you end up at three, two, three upgrades with really good forge optimization. Uh, that's uh, like I've I've enjoyed that upgrade scheme for a very long time. I think it's it's one of the best ones that that uh, Protoss has. You know, and everyone has their own upgrade schemes. Like for instance, Terran against uh, anything really is generally plus one attack for mech, and then into two armories, so it's two one and then three two, right? But anyways, uh, right now we have a big battle in the center. Uh, quite a nice play goes off onto those Zealots. Some storms really destroying Lurkers here. He stacks up even more Lurkers. So Rain's going to be able to kill all this pretty easily. The storms do a great job. But a lot of this did get plagued. And some of the units did end up dying. So the army going to be a little bit easier to deal with the next time Calm uh, tries to get any sort of a battle going. More units going towards that center. Hydra, Ling, Defiler, Lurker seems to be the order of the day here for Calm. I don't know if he's going to start adding in other units. We see he's getting the drop upgrade now. That's going to be huge. Drops super, super powerful, especially with Cracklings. You can just kill just about everything in the main base. Now some storms going down. Ooh, huge storm on those Hydras. A good Dark Swarm goes down, and he's getting some pretty good value here. The Archon's having a bit of a hard time. Don't forget, their main attack doesn't do anything under Dark Storm, only their splash. So Archons, while they kind of work under Dark Storm, are not fantastic there. Of course, the Hydra's coming up to try to snipe it. Hydra's are a, a pretty strong counter to those Archons. Archon does end up surviving, and those hurt uh, Hydra's go back to become Lurkers at this point. Notice, by the way, there's a Robo at this base. I bet you over here. Yep, a Robo too. See, Rain is... I swear, he is the best Protoss. I don't care what anyone says. Okay, he's just not active that much. But, like, you look at the way that he plays. Like, this is what you need to do, right? Like, when you see late games, how do people lose? Well, you need more splash damage. 
Uh, you know, it can be really hard to stop all that, especially when they start dark swarming over cannons. But the fact that he's making Reavers at like every single base, now he's gonna have like Archon, Psy Storm, Reaver, Dragoon with some Zealots mixed in. It's really, really strong. And it makes it very hard to break these bases. Right now, he's even getting Reaver Scarab damage to bring it up to 125. Nice Plague. Plague's absolutely amazing. You want to continually do that. Zealot's uh, running down for a little bit of a counterattack, but, like, there's enough Static D. These aren't going to do that much, as you can see. It's like he kills the Nidus. Okay, but map control really belongs to Zerg right now. So even if you're killing a Nidus, it doesn't matter that much. If you had map control, that's where you can start to abuse something like killing a Nidus. Lots of Reavers being made all over the place. Getting ready for another base up in the top left. Of course, Calm has had this base for a while. Both sides just about maxed. <coughs> not that many workers for Protoss, honestly, 55. It's not that high. Now, look at this. He is trying to break up here, but against the cannons, he needs the Dark Swarms, but those don't help against, uh, you know, the, the Reavers or the uh, High Templars. So... You can see that rain, like this base would already be dead without the Reavers and Storms. But it looks like Calm is sending a big enough army that he is going to be able to kill it anyways. Now, the probes are trying to evacuate to another base. And he is going to save some of them at least. Looks about six or seven are going to make it out. But rain has to think about retaking this location as well. That is a very painful base to lose. That is going to cut him down to just two mining bases at the moment. Now, the rest of his army is going down towards six. This is a really scary army. A lot of Archons in here, a lot of Zealots, some Psy Storms as well. Uh, so that will allow him to cut through things like Zerglings very quickly and very efficiently. Gets up here, throws down a couple Storms. The Archons clearing everything super, super fast. And it does look like six o'clock is very likely to die. If you just hold the ramp, like bring a couple Archons over to the ramp, maybe throw a Psy Storm down. Well, he's not going to be able to get that done in time, unfortunately. The Ling's coming up here, pretty much single file, and you can see the Archons are having a great time against them, but this is a huge amount of units. Look at the amount of Lurkers coming over. What am I even looking at right now? This is like 20 Lurkers coming in the other side. Two Psy Storms going to deal with a lot of them right now, but the damage output of this Protoss army is too high. Six o'clock will end up falling here, and with it, a lot of drones. We're down to just 50 drones at the moment for Calm. He has a lot of Lurkers over here kind of defending, zoning that army out of this area. He's taking another base. Rain still hasn't taken top left. Still hasn't cleared 12 o'clock. You know, he's made some very good moves. And he actually has much more supply. But I honestly feel like Calm is doing well here. And I think Calm's going to be able to take it. Now, that being said, another Dark Storm base attack coming up here. Four Storm... Four or five High Templars here with Psy Storms. So going to be a little bit hard to break through, but you have to like literally completely kill everything. It takes two Storms per Lurker. Needs one more, and he has it. Oh, and there is there is one more Lurker here. So he needs one more Storm. Uh, brings down the Zealots. They might end up being able to do it. A few more rallying in here as well. Oh, God, more Lurkers coming also. Ooh, that would be a great Storm location. He does have one Storm for that as well. The Archons coming down to fight. The Archons don't really help against Lurkers under Dark Storm. Reavers coming out, though. They certainly will. Reavers can bust up Lurkers so quickly. Oh, my God. A ton of them going down. By the way, a giant Archon army flanking against these Defilers. Oh, my God. Going to pick off some Defilers and prevent more units from coming up to 3 o'clock. And it looks like this will be held with thanks to the Reavers. My God, look at this army now moving down towards that bottom right. Of course, the Zerglings in here will evaporate relatively quickly. Don't forget, though, they do deal a ton of damage to Archons. So even though the Archons are a pretty good counter to them, they actually, in the right numbers, do end up beating Archons as well. Now, the Reaver trying to help out here, but obviously all these units going to die. Hopefully, we'll get out with the Reaver. I think he will. Trying to pick off as many of these Hydras as he possibly can, being super, super efficient at the moment. And in fact, he will end up killing all of them. Very well done. Has a High Templar in there as well. I think it's time to run away with this before you die to Scourge. See, the Scourge are coming. <laughs> Gonna try for a little bit more damage. Flying towards that bottom right. Drops out the Reaver. The Reaver's gonna take a bunch of hits. And yeah, one High Templar gets out. 
Okay, four or five drones. Okay, well, a good last hurrah for the units in that shuttle. Definitely some some value happening here for rain. Let's try to take a look at the actual game state. They're both on 46 workers. So we have this very well mining base. This base is getting a bit low for rain. Everything else is mined out. Mined out, mined out, mined out. Not there, low drones, very good drones. Probably actually should grab a handful of those and send. Oh, okay, well, you did send some more. So the economy right now for Zerg is two base against two base, right? But Zerg's economy is gonna last a lot longer. Rain really needs another base. He either needs another base or he needs to kill another base, basically. Especially considering six is coming back up. And to infiltrate into six again is just not likely. This is so far away from everything. Like the, your best infiltration might be to, if I can zoom out for a moment, right? Here's your rally. Going through the entire middle and up this ramp is probably the only realistic way, but you'll be getting flanked units from here coming down and then units coming out of this area, which is a, a stronger production area right now. This is where most units are being made, right? So they can get up that ramp very quickly. Doesn't seem likely. So again, I think that rain just needs to throw down a Nexus. Like the roaming is still good. Run around here, get the value where you can, get some good size storms, pick off units that are not in great positions. These are great moves, but start that Nexus. Get that Nexus going. Because if he doesn't get another base up by the time this one goes down, which is very, very, very soon, his economy is going to be just tanked. Well, looks like he's going for a push. This could actually be Rain's idea to try to kill the main base and all the tech. That is reasonable. Even though he's mined out everything here, imagine you get rid of the spawning pool, the defiler mound, the spire, the hydralis den, the hive. Those are big kills. This might actually be the best play here for Rain. By the way, drops come up here and deny any thoughts of a Nexus. So even what I was saying to Rain before was not something that would have ended up working. Of course, the best Protoss in the world knows what he's doing here. Some nice plagues go down. The Reavers trading pretty darn efficiently. He's got to pick those up. He's got to keep those Reavers alive. They're really key to knocking out the Ling Lurker. All right, drops one out here. Looking for a good shot. I like that he only drops one, by the way. Because most of the stuff that's attacking will kill both of them at the same time. You don't need the double Scarab. So runs up into the main base with a big group of these units while the rest just defend. Look at this. It's all this splash damage and tanking. Spread out Reavers as well. This is a magnificent play from Rain. Seriously, this is stupidly good. He's killing off all of the tech right now while his little A team of units is killing off anything that tries to save it. So right now, almost all the tech is gone. Look at this. Spawning Pool and Spire, the last two remaining ones. We'll jump around in a second here as we see the end of this battle uh, to see what has been remade for Calm so that you can actually still produce units. Now, the Lings and Hydras come up here. I don't think they're going to trade that well. It's not enough units right now. Might have been a little bit wasteful. They're probably better to back up at this point. But let's take a look. Nothing tech-wise. Nothing tech-wise. Nothing tech-wise. Spawning Pool on the way. That's it. No Hydralisk Den. No Spire. No Defiler Mound. Nothing. What do you do here? What do you do here is calm. Did Rain do it? Rain's out of this base, by the way. He's going to... Yeah, it looks like he wants to clear this area. Maybe think about 12 o'clock. He's getting low there as well. Much better economy for his opponent. Honestly, I almost feel like you should just mass Sunkins here. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah, loses one of those Reavers quickly. The other with very, very low health at the moment. Woo. Yeah, it's a good explosion right there. No, it doesn't quite get the Defiler. Rain continuing to try to push up into 6 o'clock. If he can knock out this base, this could get a little bit testing here for, uh, for Calm. This is definitely not what he wants to see. Lots of splash damage still left in the form of the Reaver and some Archons. But of course, Dark Swarm going to help immensely. Looks like the Observer's got a little bit out of position there. He does have some Psy Storms and Reavers. Throws a Psy Storm down. It's only hitting one. Reaver going to help to knock out the rest. Where's those Observers? Okay, brings the Observers up. More Lurkers falling. Oh my god. Dude, calm. Like, 
he has still a good bank. He is sending a lot of units up here. Looks like he wants to try to knock this base out. But Rain may go for a kill on the bottom right. And, I mean, that's all that's left, really. I mean, this doesn't really do too much for you. He does have a group of units just kind of sitting there. But, yeah, Rain going to attack in towards that bottom right right now. Comes in. And this natural definitely going to end up falling. He is making some lurkers up on the high ground. Can he get these Hydras into some sort of position to help out? I'm not so sure right now. I really can't even believe what I'm looking at. Rain is going to do this. Like, it really looked bad for him a few times. Oh, my God. Storms the eggs. And then as he unstorms, eats a scarab there. Not much left in the way of defense. What a great play there by Rain to go ahead and kill off all that tech in the bottom left. That was, it was such good play because I was thinking more towards like this moment in the game where he doesn't have probes over here, right? But he goes ahead, kills all of the tech and then rolls through everything while the tech is being rebuilt. I do think Calm could have remade the tech a little bit quicker. I do think he could have maybe made a little bit more static D like up here or maybe here to try to hold on and try to grind out the game but magnificently played by Rain. He will end up three to zero in this three game series uh, and just stupidly well played. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this game. It was a great one. Thanks for watching.